The aspirations of today's British teenagers have changed. Hang on, let me get the girl now. <laughs> In a recent survey of girls aged 15 to 19, almost two-thirds admitted that glamour modelling is their dream job. I just want this so much and I just don't want to go home. But it's a cutthroat industry. We were selling armpits, that would be the shot. <laughs> and only a few make it to the top. Yeah. Yeah. We can start unless the hair and makeup is on paper. For the first time in 30 years, glamour agency Samantha Bond Management opens its doors to reveal the tears. So stuff they said I was so good. When you are, wow. and you are good. The tantrums. You've been in the sport with your clothes on. You're trying to put me down because I've done top us in knots. And the pressures. They said that I was fat, supposedly. This is life as a glamour girl. Louise Glover has been in the glamour business for six years. In that time, she's graced the covers of almost every men's magazine, but her look is no longer in vogue. I've only really ever wanted to be a model. I, for some reason, really haven't been out to many castings. I do look at Nikki and Smart Bond as like my mentor. If I want advice, they're the people I ring. If I am upset about something in the industry, they're the people I tell, because they're the ones to give me the answers. I'm ringing them two or three times a week, which most models should do anyway, just to, you know, keep in the minds of the agents because they've got so many new girls coming through as well as all the main girls they've got, and you just get forgotten about, so you've got to literally be on the phone to them. Louise has had surgery to reduce her previous boob jobs, going from an E-cup to a C-cup. Have you got your book? Yes. I've got little boobs now. Much better, more proportional. I've got to go back under the knife basically just on this side because the implant's pushing the muscle up slightly. You can only see it like you know like from the actual side because mm. I want them to have that like natural yeah. I love those. So right the next thing is what we're gonna do with you. What are you gonna do with me? Well hopefully I've listened to everything you've said. You know, I've listened to your advice from obviously I think I've gone as far as I can go with glamour. Yeah. I have been on the cover of Maxim Abroad, I've been mm. in FHMs all over the world. I've got Russian FHMs, I've got South African, I've got Australian, I've got Spanish, I've got Germany. But a UK one, I just don't feel a lot of them have given me a chance at all. And now I'm at a point where I'm thinking, is my days over with glamour? You know, I think she's not about beauty anymore. I think it's like just down to personality. All the TV people are now not necessarily stunners, are they? And they, you know, go yeah. off into the magazines yeah. and. Yeah, that's kind of not helped as well, the reality shows. And you put me in front of the camera. I work with some really good photographers in America and I've never felt so proud of myself because some stuff they said I was so good. Never when you are, that. and you are good, and don't ever lose sight of that, you know, you are incredibly good in front of the camera. It is difficult and they are looking for brand new people and you have, they do know you. I don't understand it, Louise. That's why we've got to try and work it somewhere else. And come here, sweetie. Come here. You know, we're still here and we're not giving up, OK? And we're going we're gonna to sort it out. Um, and you have been making changes. And you... It, it's going to change so much, though. You have changed it's incredibly. It's going to do keep changing. Well, don't change anymore. <laughs> because you can't keep trying to adopt to every situation. You'll drive yourself mm. mental. You just I'm have to be who mental. you are and... You know, that's why you're driving yourself mad, trying to be this for that person, that for this person. Just be you and accept when there are things that are not right for you and accept it and just move on. If we cannot get you in those magazines, if for whatever reason we can't, we have to try different areas. Yeah, let's just get some really nice work for you. Things that give you satisfaction. It will happen. Just keep the faith. Okay. Okay. On Merseyside, Louise Glover is getting into her makeup and glad rags, but not for a photo shoot. It's been a year since Louise last saw her family. Going home will be a big reminder of how different her life has become. So them obviously are models, and I'm competing with them all the time. And it's not so much that it's a bitchy industry; it's just natural instinct that you know it's like animals and the predators around them, like a leopard and a cheetah. 
they're up against, you know, they're trying to catch the same food. It's the same as modelling, you're trying to get the same job. Whereas when I come home, these are my friends, these are the people I grew up with. And these are the people that are true and loyal. At the local pub, her family and old school friends have turned out for the party. They're proud of the life she's managed to make for herself in London. A lot of her friends now, they're single mothers and living in an house and not doing nothing out of you know what I mean? But as she's got up and she's made a name for herself. Only one of Louise's friends from London joins the party. Andy Le Sauvage is a photographer who's worked with Louise for the past five years. Louise makes the most of having him there. I'll take two pictures, one of my camera. Are you ready for this? Last year, I gave her away at her wedding in Las Vegas. You know, there we were in the Grand Canyon, a million miles away from here, where she kind of was born and brought up. And um, it's really, really nice to see where she's gone, really. She's from up north here. Everybody has to fight for what they want. You know, they're real people, really, really down-to-earth people. London is very, very much more fake. You've got to be a different person. A little bit of her is still here, even though she's in a completely different world down there. So, yeah, it's two completely different worlds she's in. One, two, three, and smile! Next up is 24-year-old Louise Glover. Her modelling jobs have been sparse, and only last week she was ready to quit for good. And now I'm at a point where I'm thinking, is my days over with glamour? If we cannot get you in those magazines, we have to try different areas. Just keep the faith. OK? OK. okay. okay. Louise did keep the faith, and the agency has put her forward for this job. So is this part of a shoot or a holiday or tests? Or... Shoot, yeah. Very pretty. Mm. How many operations have you had, did you say? Four, so you've had enlarging and then reducing? Yeah. I think she'll do well. She's got a greater body. Can you just turn the side on? Just a bit more that way, just so that's it. Yeah, you're good. There's a lot riding on this job, and Louise is finding it hard to relax. I'm just a bit conscious at the time. Before she goes, Louise is eager to get some feedback. Mm, not naughty. But trying to regular we'll I think I was too conscious as well. What did you think of me in the normal clothes? The normal range? Good. You're very toned though. That's too toned. Good. No, you're too toned. Too toned but, for but, your range. Yeah, from my range. So not got the joke. I need to go through the pictures and uh, oh. and, uh, and I let you know through Chrissy. Okay. That's how I learn. In East London, Louise Glover is preparing for a photo shoot, except today she'll be behind the camera. Louise has been an international glamour icon for six years, but now feels squeezed out of the market by the demand for celebrity cover shots. Black panels around there to slim the hat? Um, slim hat. Not for those four white ones. If you want to do white ones, you want to put as much white in there as possible. OK. So you pull this closer. So you're bouncing more white in? Yeah, so you can bounce that much closer, look. It's going to be very beneficial futuristically for me because I've obviously been doing it for a couple of years now and I'm building up and building up and getting better and getting better. I'm also showing girls along the way how to pose, how to act, how to be in front of the camera, just loosen up. I'm always picking something up of them as a model as well. So it's a clever little way as well for me still learning new techniques for my, my modelling. <laughs> Jackie Degg has been a glamour model for 10 years. She's worked with some of the best in the business. That's cute. Yeah, so look how we showed them all. That's the one. Oh, 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 oh. oh What? Oh, right, yeah, sorry. Yeah, well, no, no. Will help me with it. Louise needs to make her subject comfortable. Is it awkward or? <laughs> Is it awkward? You can tell in the voice. <laughs> Great pose. That's it. Right, real good mistake here. What have we done with the socks? I know. It's not the best, isn't it? I did think that. How many years have you been modelling? <laughs> okay. One, two, three. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. They look cool. Crazy, I cannot take any more. I'm so glad that I'm.
After six successful years, Louise's look seems to have fallen out of favour, so being behind the camera has become something of a necessity. When I'm doing my photography, it's not what I really want to be doing because my modelling is the most important thing to me and it always has been and always will be. But this is just something I actually enjoy doing and I feel like I am actually quite good at it. Hello. Right. Hi, you're nice to meet you. It's Amy, oh. isn't it? Yeah, I'm Amy. She said... In order to build a photographer's portfolio, Louise is sent new models from Samantha's agency for test shoots. Fantastic experience, but the money isn't great. I'm privileged that Samantha Bond's sending me models, but they don't expect the models to pay. So I find myself saying, yeah, I'll do the shoot, and then I'm out of pocket myself, because I could on that day go and do a casting or a job or an interview, whatever it be, and get paid or at least go to an interview towards getting a job. So what Sam said with you, are you thinking of just doing commercial or glamour as well? No glamour. What size boobs are you? 32 E, D, double D, E. So you don't need your boobs doing then? <laughs> I'd like to get them lifted. <laughs> just because other people have got boobs doesn't mean you have to compete with the, know, the fact that you've got big natural, natural boobs. natural ones are going to sag. <laughs> I think you'd be all right with your big natural boobs anyway, so... Natural boobs. <laughs> Small talk over, it's time to get on with a shoot. And a one. Ah. Look at me slightly when you do it. Look at me and do it. Ha, <laughs> he, That's it, got it. I think it's going okay. It's really strange to see myself in like different makeup with different hair to how. You would normally do your own hair and makeup. You get used to seeing yourself in the mirror a certain way. Again, again. I've got you laughing instead. I love being in front of that camera. And I suppose that's why I'm behind it right now, because it, the work isn't necessarily there for me to be in front of it, so by being behind it is the next best thing. Once the shoot's over, Louise reflects on her own modelling career. I just feel a bit crappy because, like, Amy came in, she's 20 years old, she's brand new. No one's used her in the magazines or nothing, she's not done anything. I was the first person to do photos of her, so she's got some nice prints for a book now, you know, and I can just imagine Sam sending her to, like, all the magazines that I'm trying to get back in with, and then it makes just me feel like crap because I can't compete with this big, natural, busted girl who's never done any modelling before. I can't compete with that. At Sam Bond's headquarters in Chelsea, the agents have just received the photos that model Louise Glover took of promising new star Amy Diamond. Oh, that's quite sweet. Oh, that's nice. That's yeah, nice. that's really sweet. Like that. Oh, that's lovely. That's actually mm. really nice. The mask looks fantastic it in her eyes. Yeah, her expressions are brilliant. At the agency, Sam and Nikki are trying to devise a plan to kickstart Louise Glover's stalled career. Well, that's lovely. So we'll say yes, we'll still with that one, yeah? Yeah. The 24 year old is struggling to get the work she wants. She's starting to work as a photographer, even shooting new model Amy Diamond, but she's not prepared to give up modelling yet. I love being in front of that camera. I suppose that's why I'm behind it right now, because it, the work isn't necessarily there for me to be in front of it. Now we can approach it now with some new pictures yeah, yeah. and the fact that she's taken up photography, that could be interesting in an article yeah. they do with her. So girls. today, just do the, the, the mags? We'll just do the, today the, the, lads the, the lads mags. OK. Yeah. How many pictures of Louise are we sending you at? Four? Four. Um, okay. well, another, well, do, you need another, do we need another couple of shots, really, of her pictures that she's actually taken? Yeah, we're going to do that. Yeah, so also, you know that pop video she did recently? Was that with somebody really well known? Scouting for Girls, yeah, yeah. So, She's so lovely, it's called. And she does look lovely, doesn't she? She does, yeah. She's so lovely, she's so lovely, she's so lovely, she's so lovely. In today's fiercely competitive glamour market, the average model's career comes to an end at around 25. To ensure longevity, a model must develop a unique selling point or diversify. Oh, good morning. Is Steve Beach there, please? 
you know, fashion outfits. She is looking amazing. Can I send over a few new shots of her? She's taken up photography and maybe published a few of her glamour shots. Oh, good morning, Simon. It's Samantha Bond here. It's Samantha Bond. But she's looking fabulous. Oh, good morning. Is Steve there, please? Have you heard of the group Scouting for Girls? Well, I'll send these over now if that's all right. All right, darling. Well, it was nice talking to you. And hopefully we'll speak very shortly. All right, bye-bye. Ready, -bye. Sam gets some disappointing news from Nuts magazine, who are one of their major clients. He was making comments about the fact that they're more inclined to do things on celebrities oh. rather than glamour girls. Um, and I said, well, I used the word glamour, but I'm sure you've got the celebrities dressed up glamorously. Sure have, yeah. And he said, no. He said, if you look at our latest colour, they're not in lingerie or bikinis. So, we've basically covered all the bases there. We just have to wait for a reply. Near Oxford Circus, Louise Glover arrives at celebrity nightclub Mo Vida, but she's not here to party. She's used her own contacts to appear in a fashion show for designer clothing brand Ed Hardy. It's not paid work, but it's a chance to show off her modelling skills to a potential new client. Maybe just give me one This is my little time to shine and show people this is what I really look like. This is the real me, show a bit of my personality as well. Can we give them a twirl or something? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just do what you want to do, because everyone's going to be individual and everyone looks different. Okay. It's a fashion show. It's just not glamour, and I'm happy about it because it's, it's I'm modelling clothes and I feel... I feel sexier with clothes on. The cameras will be there. Okay. So, we want you to use this as your backdrop. Yeah. But it's good for me to be breaking away from the glamour because I think I've done too much of it and I'm at an age where. But your new girl comes in at 18, I'm 24 now, so I need to break into newer things. In London, Soho, Louise Glover has a photo shoot lined up. Today I'm doing a shoot for Stringfellas catalogue. It's basically all the lingerie. It's all, it's all new, you see, with Stringfellas. The shoot is taking place in Peter Stringfellow's exclusive nightclub. OK, let's see what we got here. You tend to find the more you've been modelling, the more people come directly to you anyway. Well, there's, loads of mm -hmm. there's nothing I can do. I mean, I do actually ring some up one, two to maybe three times a week. Is there any castings? Is there any jobs coming up? You know, because you can't wait around all day for these castings to come in. Sometimes you've got to be a bit cheeky and kind of put yourself forward for them. Louise has arranged this shoot through her own contacts. The only problem with direct work is negotiating. I'm not the best for negotiating, but I'm not going to take an advantage of taking the piss out of basically when it comes to money, whether it's a, a direct job or not. Stretch the body, stretch, nice stretch. I'm very happy when I'm modelling here because one, it's a job, two, I'm getting paid for it, three, it's something I've always wanted to be doing, and I'm doing it. So I'm living my dream, basically. Halfway through the shoot, Peter Stringfellow himself makes an appearance. Oh my God, get your clothes on, girl. What kind of club do you think this is? A well-known name and face in the glamour world, he doesn't hesitate to offer advice. Yeah, nice shot. So be careful of that, though. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. That's, that looks muscles. She obviously works out, but you've got to be She's careful not to show you tummy muscle. No, it's not you, it's him. In actual fact, Louise, you take a very good photo. Which I'm sure you don't, that's why we're using it. If it's for a magazine, it's more about you, so it's more about your face and stuff. Where when you're selling a product, you can look away a little bit more than looking at the camera, but it's still good to look in. Louise is um, a bit of a celebrity star on the London circuit, and we've used uh, Louise in uh, brochures before. She's a natural. I mean, she's a beautiful girl. Oh, oh, oh. Louise has just took a few pauses. Bang, bang, bang. I'm thinking about body shape, thinking about where's my hair, thinking about the situation that I'm in and what I'm trying to sell or whatever it is. That's a lot better. Yeah. That is a shot that I'll use for, the, uh, for my internet as well. 
In Soho, London, the Stringfellow laundry shops of Louise Glover have come in. She's very good. Absolutely brilliant. But we've used her in the past with the This is what shirts. Jordan should look like. <laughs> This positive feedback is great news for Louise. It means she's on her way back after recent struggles to get good modelling jobs. In this business, there's a lot of up and downs, but when a client absolutely loves the work that you've shot for them, then you can't ask for anything more. You know, I've done all this glamour modelling, I've been doing it for years, I've done really well at it. I've done the Playboy, I've done the Penthouse, I've done all the lads mags in the UK. At the same time, these agencies are telling me to go commercial and it breaks my bloody heart because it's almost like completely changing the whole job and starting from scratch. It's like a different job to me. I've been quite depressed this past nine months. So, because I'm now feeling better and I'm in a more positive frame of mind, I know that everything's going to start falling into place now. It's been nine months nearly a year that I haven't done really any glamour modelling type stuff. So I just need to basically just get myself back out there. I've got a big future ahead of me, I just kind of need to just get onto it. There's more good news from the shoot as Peter Stringfellow thinks the photos have more potential. That particular one could be sent to the um, large magazines. OK. That is their stuff. All in all, I'm very pleased with the shoot. Yeah. We chose the right model. I think my job's become a bit of a catch-22. It's like, if my work's going really, really well, personal life suffers. If the personal life with the husband's going really well, and we've been on holiday, we've had a great time, then because of focusing on that, I'm not getting the work in. It's just life, I suppose, at the end of the day. A lot of people are probably the same in any kind of job. There's a lot of things um, that you should and shouldn't do in this industry, um, and... Basically, one of the main key things is just to look after number one. There's a lot of idiots out there, especially managers and agents and boyfriends, everyone you think you can trust, but just look after number one in every single way. That's the key to this life, I think. <laughs>